In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five keys to success on the defensive side of the ball, five things that you can do to take your Madden defense uh, to the next level. And I'm uh, going to be showing this to you. I'm in the 46 playbook, and we're going to be taking a look at the dollar defense. I've been doing a lot of content out of dollar. I do believe that dollar is probably the best overall defense because it hits these five key things that we're going to talk about in the video. So if you want to get my entire $1.32 updated defensive ebook, make sure that you join the Patreon. We've been dropping updates literally every single day for the last two weeks. If you guys haven't become a member yet, you get access for just 10 bucks to all of our ebooks and all of the updates to those ebooks. So if you want to become a member, the link is in the description. All right, guys, so I wanted to talk about kind of my five things, uh, just five things you can do to take your defense to the next level. You can apply this to any year of Madden. And the first tip is to have um, a defense where you are going to basically make everything look the same. And the way we're going to do that out of the dollar defense is we're going to run it on baseline. So what you're going to notice here, if I don't have it on baseline, and let's say that I come out in the DB fire too, but then I set you know some audibles or whatever, what you're going to notice is if I audible to spinner, for example, you're going to notice that my safeties start to move. You're going to notice if I audible to cover three buzz, the safeties are going to kind of roll over oftentimes. Right, it's just not a very good strategy. So, uh, because if the best players in the world, they're gonna know what you're able to do. So, what we wanna do is we wanna kind of say, okay, let's make everything look the same. One of the best features this year to do that is to run your defense on base line. Now, this has been the best way to run dollar uh, for as long as I've been playing. It's been one of the better ways to run the run the formation. Now, the other thing is. Um, to have a plan for stopping the run. One of the things I like to do is turn my option defense to conservative so that if they ever run like a read option style run, then I'm going to be able to defend that. But how are you going to stop the run out of your defense? And this is oftentimes in the form of a gap shoot of some type. So maybe you're standing right about here. And if they pass, yes, you have good pressure. But if they run the ball, like what's your plan? Well, you have to ask yourself, where are they going to run the ball from? How can this formation threaten me uh, in the run game. If you know anything about U-Trips, you know that it's not got really good uh, really good runs, and so we don't necessarily need to worry about it. But let's say we're playing a formation like tight offset. We need to worry about that zero and trap, so we're going to pinch our D-line, kind of get our guy down here, muddy up the run game a little bit more. Um, and as you can see, this is very helpful. So the first tip is to make everything look the same. The second tip is to have a plan for stopping the run. The third thing that you need to do to take your defense to the next level is always give a threat that pressure could be coming. What I mean by that is you want to have the ability to send pressure. And ideally, we want to have the ability to send pressure um, against a you know a five out offense, a blocked running back, and a blocked tight end. So how are you going to send pressure? Well, from here, all we have to do from this is we're just going to press. And what you're going to notice is if I stand about right here, we're going to have a nice little blitz off of the edge. Even if the running back blocks, we're going to be able to uh, we're going to be able to get pressure. Now, I think it's really important to keep your pressure appropriate to what your opponent's doing. So, for example, if they're not blocking their running back, then one of the things we can do is drop that slot corner on the right off of the um, blitz, and now we can send four, and we see that that gives us a lot of consistency and allows us to get an additional player into coverage. This is actually super, super important. I think this is what separates Dollar from a lot of defenses. If they're gonna block their running back, right, then I don't need to send this guy off the left side. Maybe I'll man him up on the running back or something. And what you'll see is if I send this right side guy, he out leverages the running back. Doesn't always come in, no. But this is uh, kind of a strategy that you can utilize for blitzing. For example, if I have this defensive end, I know he's not coming free. So I'm gonna man him up on the running back. Then maybe over here on the left side, maybe I take this slot and man him up on that solo receiver or something like this. So this is only a three man pressure. But what you'll see here is this can come in pretty decently as you see, and it pushes the pocket. Sometimes your, bl your blitz doesn't have to actually scream if you can just make them feel the pressure that you have. So another really key tip here is the other thing that you get by this is if that running back, they try to quick throw this running back, this defensive line man up, especially if they have pick artists, is going to be a really, really good adjustment uh, for defending that. So, again, learning the ins and outs of blitzing situationally. So, if they're, for example, let's say you're playing this formation, 
and they are blocking their running back and you still want to guarantee your pressure, then we're going to send this five-man pressure. And as you can see, we're able to get the pressure off of the right side. Now, what if they're blocking their tight end and they're not blocking their running back? You want to lab your pressure up for different types of situations like that. So as you'll see right here, this is the five-man pressure. You see we're still able to get pressure even if they block their tight end. So now we want to say, okay, how does this play? and How does this blitz work? against max pro so if they block seven and what you'll see here is by and large this is a pretty good way for them to pick up the blitz but this leaves them only three routes left to put out our routes so this is where we can also say well what if we blitz this linebacker if we blitz this linebacker right here you know does this change anything for us and in this example it doesn't but in some formations such as tight it does change things for you. So those are some key little things and, and understanding that you not only need to have a threat of a blitz, but you need to have blitzes for situations. I don't want to send five. I want to send as little people, uh, as few number of blitzers as possible to get my pressure. So if I can do something like this right here on the right, and then I can still drop this guy on the right side here into coverage on maybe the tight end, for example, this is not a bad strategy whatsoever. And this idea of blitzing off of one side and rolling coverage to the other side is actually uh, super practical because if you think about it, if they only if they block their running back, you know, and let's say they set up you know a route combo here on the on the on the left or on the right, and we drop everybody in coverage, this is still advantageous. Why? Well, because all of our help is over here on the right side of the screen. We don't have any help on the left side of the screen, so we're able to say, oh, we can just flow back here, and the pressure is still going to shed, and by the time anything comes open, you know they're getting sacked. So. Third tip is super, super critical. Uh, now the fourth tip, master adjustments. And really when I say adjustments, I mean formation adjustments. Every formation has strengths and weaknesses. And it's important that you learn how to adjust to not only the formation you're playing, but the tendencies of your opponent. You want to have base adjustments that give you kind of a basic, like this is pretty decent defense for what a lot of people like to do out of U-trips, for example. But maybe, you know, you're watching this and you're like, well, but this guy just keeps throwing to the tight end. He keeps throwing to the tight end. Then we're going to take this safety and we're going to man him up on the tight end. And now we're going to basically use her this left side flat, you know. So you can do stuff like this that situationally can counter things. So how are you going to adjust to the best formations? That is such an important thing and it's such an important thing to learn. It's something that I feel like everyone can learn more about. And I think it truly is the secret sauce of the top Madden players in the world is, is that they're able to adjust at a really, really high level and they're able to do it based on situation. So that kind of leads me to my fifth tip, which is play situational defense. For example, if it is third and long, soft squats are irrelevant. You don't need them. What you might want to do, though, is you might go middle third, outside third, outside quarter zone. That outside quarter zone is going to help you or um, bracketing the key routes on the field with man up. So, for example, we know that the slot corner in U or the slot receiver in U trips, if they're trying to pick up a big third down, they might send him on a deep corner. So you go with a man up and an outside quarter adjustment with a KO. That's actually super, super valuable. So, again, play situational. If you're if it's like, um, let's say, for example, it's like third and five and you're trying to really get aggressive, maybe you play hard flats. Maybe you do something like this right here, um, you know, where we're able to get really, really aggressive uh, with the opponent, right? This is a way that you can get super, super aggressive because now they may be trying to hit their quick flat or whatever to try to take this away, but you've got a hard flat over there and now you turn this into a fourth and 10. So play situational defense. So what I mean by that is be aggressive when it's appropriate and be passive when it's appropriate. You don't have to be aggressive every single play. You don't even have to necessarily run a different defense every single play. But what you do have to do is you have to play situational football. And if you can do that, it's going to take your defense to the next level. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to learn more about the dollar defense, make sure to join the Patreon. The link is down in the description below.